Unlike price and volume, volatility is a statistical estimate, which means we have several different ways to approach measuring volatility. Here is the simplest and most common called the historical standard deviation. Among the many approaches I'm showing here, the simplest approach actually to estimating current volatility and probably the most common and that is where we calculate the historical standard deviation and we could call it a moving average. In order to do that for input data I only need the daily closing price for an asset or a stock and what I've done here is I've used the same data from John Hole's Table 10.3 in his book, Risk Management and Financial Institutions. That's the fifth edition. So that's Table 10.3. And then as expected, I get the same result as in the textbook. So for the daily price closes here, we have what looks to be about one month. That is about 21 trading days or one month of daily price close in the first column. And in the second column, we have price relatives, also called wealth ratios. And you can see these are simple. We just take, in this case, the price on day one divided by the previous day's price. And so we get a series of price relatives that is going to be, on a daily basis anyway, pretty close to one. You see how simple that is. Implicitly, this is an assumption of a non-dividend paying stock. So you can see dividends don't show up here anywhere. If we did have dividends, it's pretty simple. We would They would just get added in the numerator to compute the price relatives. After all, they are a return to the uh, owner of the stock. Okay, but here, non-dividend paying stock. So it's just S sub I divided by the previous day's S or S, S sub I minus one. These price relatives then here in the next column are converted into daily returns. And so you can see up here at the top of the column, I have the notation. I'm, so I have U sub I is the date return or the daily return. And it is just the natural log of the price ratio. You can see that's very simple here. Take the natural log of the price ratio, and we end up with a series of daily returns. And I could compute that to percentage to make it more familiar. And so we can see the first daily return here is plus 0.5%, or I might say plus 50 basis points. Second daily return is negative 1% or negative 100 basis points. On a daily basis, that's a that's a pretty material, a significant drop. Okay, over here in terms of my notation, here's my daily return, new sub I. And as I've done in the spreadsheet here, I've calculated, some of you will be recognize this, this is the continuously compounded return. By definition, if we use a natural log here, we're computing a continuously compounded return. We could call it a geometric return. I like these because they are, they have this property that's elegant which is called time, they're time additive, meaning we could just add them over time, which we can't do by maybe the more familiar calculation here, which is the simple return. We could also call this the arithmetic return. Now, a very common question we get is, which one's correct? And the answer is, well, you could see here, if we're doing uh, daily returns, and notice John Hall points out that the simple return approximates or is approximated by the period log return or continuously compounded return. So really the answer is you could probably use either. For most realistic data sets, it doesn't matter. I think in John Hull's example, he uses the uh, simple return. Yes, I'm pretty confident of that. And you can see I happen to use the continuously compounded return, yet we get almost exactly the same answer for the daily volatility. So there are some pros and cons. Um, see the link if you want um, a little more background on that choice. Okay, but so we have the series of daily returns. And then here in the final column, we simply square the returns. So that we have a series of squared daily returns. Here is their sum and here is their average. So here we have the average squared return, and that's going to be 
our daily variance. So what I have here, this formula is, after all, our approach here to estimating current volatility is to compute the historical standard deviation. And what we have here is, strictly speaking, the correct formula for the sample variance. Here we have sigma squared. Sigma squared means variance almost always. And the n means it's an estimate on, uh, as of today, day n. So our esti estimate of today's variance as a sample, you can see here, is given by the summation of the squared difference between the returns and the mean return divided by m minus 1, where m is the number of uh, uh, observations in our sample. In this case, m is 20. So we're going to be dividing by 19 because this is a sample and we're trying to estimate the population. So this sample variance is an estimator or it's an estimator that produces an estimate and in this case the m minus 1 means it's an unbiased estimate so or an unbiased estimator so strictly speaking this is the correct calculation for the sample variance and then as john hole explains we can make a couple of assumptions that greatly simplify our effort here and the first assumption is here is instead of dividing by m minus 1, we just divide by m, which is a different estimator. It's the MLE estimator, and the so it's um, slightly less conservative, but it's going to be pretty close, and it makes it much easier to calculate. So it's fine to go from an unbiased to an MLE estimate by dividing by m instead of m minus 1. Another way to look at that is we're going from a sample to implicitly a population. And then the other one that makes it much easier is you can notice here the average return. I've got that colored in uh, red and that's also calculated right here. It's the average daily return. So the correct standard deviation or the correct variance, I'm sorry, would subtract the mean. Common question we get here though, do we have to? And the answer is no. Uh, again, if our period is daily, we can also make this simplifying assumption that this mean, the mean daily return is equal to zero, so it drops out. So that's how we get from this strictly correct formula to a much more convenient version. And then I will say, and you can see the link for more discussion about this, that it's not only convenient, but there are experts who would say this is a better decision anyway because after all we're trying to estimate the current esti we're trying to estimate the current volatility and the historical daily return may not really be representative of what we expect today and going forward that is to say our best estimate really of a daily average return going to, as of today and going forward might be zero. So zero might be better. So dropping this out has very real advantages. And we end up here with the formula for an estimate of today's variance, which is actually very simple. And so the number is right here. And notice how easy we can, how easily it is to express this in English. Okay, ready? The variance is the average squared return. See how simple that is? The squared returns are here. We're taking the average. Our variance is the average squared return, such that all we need to do is take the square root of it because this is a variance rate. And the variance, of course, is not really necessarily intuitive to us but the volatility or standard deviation is. So we take the square root of that average squared return and we get, in this case, the daily volatility. So I've switched back to percentages here. And in this case, it's 1.456% square root of the average squared return. And it's represented over here. Now, if I wanted to finally go back and just reconcile that with this formula, I could do that we could use my favorite formula for the variance is really the expected 
the formula for the variance of x is the expected x, squ x squared minus the expectation of x squared. That's the formula for variance. So if I use that, I could actually use that here by taking the expected x squared and subtract, or the expected, uh, uh, the average squared return and sub subtract the daily return squared. That's just my implementation of that variance formula. And then I'm going to take the square root of that formula so that what I'm doing there in this cell here is actually solving for this formula here, the less simple version, such that it should equal my standard deviation of this series of returns, which it does. Excel's built-in formula, after all, uses the strictly collect correct formula, and I've replicated it here. So that is the, uh, an explanation of standard deviation or historical standard deviation as an estimate of the daily volatility. If you like this video, do us a favor and subscribe to the channel or feel free to visit us at our forum. Thank you.